Oh, oh, oh. oh dear, oh dear. Oh, that is way too creepy. I need a break. Off for some painting. Alright, so I know this came up during the questions at least once as we begin here. How do you start this? Do you draw it? Do you use line? Do you use uh, shapes? And this came from uh, Tali. Uh, in this case, this is a, a kind of a funny situation. This was actually originally a demonstration for students uh, in my programs. And they one student actually presented this original image that you're seeing here, right? A nice little simple sky, little tree and a, a car busted along uh, the roadway here, or this path. And so I was just demonstrating some various things that they wanted, you know, how you can use or imply brush brushes, or <laughs> grass brushes, not brush brushes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it kind of started off as very simple and a very kind of modest take on, on doing some brush work things. Uh, and then eventually that evolved to, okay, well, if, if we can utilize the brush work like this, maybe we can uh, push or enhance uh, the composition so that originally started out like this where I'm just like let's bring some light through some of the trees this and I like to show a lot of what if scenarios when kind of painting like this so I'm like you can show a bit of a brighter horizon you can add more depth to the forest if you start to add brighter colors kind of coming through the trees like so changes the time of day changes that mood a little bit so I, I go and show them like okay this is one direction you could potentially take it in and I, and I entertain the idea for a little while I, I push it uh, forward I I'm just using hard round Photoshop brushes in this case and thinking uh, more in regards to design rather than a lot of literal elements like I think okay this would be look interesting having lines here of course they would literally translate to trees uh, and the same with the foliage. Like I, I just think of them using simple uh, shapes of brushes like this. So I'm not trying to paint leaves. I'm trying to paint interesting uh, shapes, you know, in that regard. And that, that's kind of really what's happening on this first pass. I'm, you know, largely, uh, you know, ignoring a lot of the sky and uh, some of the the foreground elements and stuff. But yeah, it it's kind of just organically grown, as I said into that last of us kind of piece that it eventually made it to i i, I see these paint overs uh, literally sitting in all kinds of places on my hard drive i do them for the patrons every month and i sometimes if i'm just too lazy to start something from scratch or if i just want to fiddle with something if i'm low on time or effort and energy I'll, I'll just take an existing kind of paint over and I'll just keep going with it yeah so I believe my original the original credit here to, to this image does go to my student Arnie um, but yeah I'm, I'm showing okay we can increase the depth in an image like this you know in regards to the forest by you know adding trees into a the midground and be the the foreground it, it doesn't need to have them but this is what it would look like if we were to push depth in that regard uh, and then I'm you know, blurting out the sky, I thought the trees looked a little too short, a little too slante, and they were adding a, a weird kind of graphic element, uh, creating that sky as well. So I'm showing in this case, this is what it could look like from a design perspective if we remove that component. Um, and it's still working, it's still fun. Uh, as you can see here, I'm just using like a chalky and, and sponge type brush and just making a lot of bold marks uh, for the leaves because there I know there's numerous questions about the foliage and stuff but they really just start off as lines uh, as you can see here now I'm, I'm thinking more like a, I'm trying to think more like a graphic designer at this stage this is nearing the end of one of the sessions like yeah you can you can dapple in some some light you can add in grass coming over the rock there's a lot of characteristic things you can bring you know to a painting like this you can even add light beams you know coming through dappled light on the foliage there's a lot of set dressing related elements you can add you know to a painting once it gets to a level you can increase the bloom effects you can do a lot of things in that regard um, but yeah that's just one sort of uh, take that you could bring you know an image that was at his level and at that level of finish 
uh, that you could do with it. Now, a couple questions came up, because this is a Last of Us piece. Uh, if you check on my art station, link below, I did kind of like a Last of Us piece when the original came out about six or seven years ago. This one was really realistic. It was highly de uh, textured and detailed, They're a lot actually closer in, in tone or theme um, to what the actual game is. Now, as you can see in this one, I think this is why a few of these questions came up. But uh, uh, Peter Anton asks, and what do you think you know makes Hayao Miyazaki's work so appealing? Uh, you know, what separates it from the crowd, and what lessons? I think there's a lot of lessons in there. Uh, there's of course his work as an animator, and then there, of course, we're we're talking about the background design, which come from his his designers. But I I, I can't answer that for everybody. But I, I can, and that could actually justify a whole a whole video in itself at some point. But I would say for me, the first thing that grabs me about a Hayao Miyazaki um, background or film is the use of color. They're insanely saturated, they're bright, they're punchy. There's a, a character to them. It, it, it knows what they want to do and it, it's never really overly modest about it. It's just a bold use of color, I would say. And I've kind of been bringing my work, you know, for the last few years back into that realm. I, I started out that way and thought, oh, because games are now all super realistic and everything, I gotta do realistic work. That's the only way I'm going to get work. And then, of course, I wisened up and, oh, yeah, I, if I do stylized art and stylized color choices well, I can still get all this, <laughs> the same type of jobs that I, that I would want. There won't be a shortage of it. So, And that's why I'm kind of going back full circle in my personal work and career stuff is I, I love the color. I love the vibrancy of it. I love that, that this is not just another piece of Last of Us art that you would that would fit into a, the Last of Us artwork. The, the artwork in that game and the concept art that's going to be released in the coming weeks is going to be absolutely stunning. Um, and I respect the heck out of the talent and effort that goes into there, but uh, what speaks to me even more is, is art that's vibrant, that's colorful, that is a little more um, painterly and suggestive. And so that's why I'm doing my interpretation on the work. And it's a great way to practice for those of you that are sitting at home and even during uh, you know lockdown and stuff that you just want to practice. Take something and do it in your style or take something and just change the style deliberately of it. Do your interpretation of a subject matter or genre. And, that, and this is mine. This is my interpretation of the Last of Us world. I'm not trying to make an, a statement in regarding to the game or, or the second one, which is hugely contradicting right now. You'd have to let me know, of course, your opinions in, in the comments below regarding that. I'd still love to hear it. But yeah, I'm, I'm just bringing up that, that punch. Now, what I, I didn't have at this point in, in the in the paint over, which is when I think I kind of started picking it up for a second group of students and showing them how to keep pushing things. But uh, in this case, I never had an, an intention to make it like a Last of Us piece. I never had an intention even adding a character. But I, I am kind of the way the lines are going with the road, the way the trees are banding around to that left. I'm kind of funneling the viewer and... Uh, the direction and movement in the painting that way. So, as I always say in the brush sauce critique sessions, you know, each month, um, when we frame something right in between those two trees and we have lines pushing us there, if we don't have anything to put in that space, it's kind of like wasted potential. We're not kind of setting up a payoff. And so that's why ultimately, you know, down the line, what I decided to do is add in, you know, Ellie the character back there. It could have been anything, it could have been a deer. It could have been a moose. Um, it's a character. In this case, it's a character from the game. And I think that helps balance it all out because there is a lot of visual weight. And I am making it a point to kind of highlight this wrecked car. That was originally what it was about. And it can still act as a secondary focal point. There can be more than one. Now, Dante, while we're on this subject, uh, you had asked if you could talk about stylizing versus realism. That's one of my favorite topics, and it, and I get it. It's, there's a huge struggle with that, and I, I, but I do believe and agree with you that I, I think you should try to learn the art fun, fundamentals. Uh, you know, almost like emulating reality. Draw and paint what's in front of you. See if you can reproduce reality first. See if you understand the shapes and the forms and of course the principles of light. Because then once you understand it, then you can break 
you know all the rules you can you know, deliberately break all the con uh, conventions that go with it and that's what defines style is by your use of exaggeration and what shortcuts you take what liberties you're making that that's what ultimately builds and defines a style and what's what separates it from a reality but if you just do that without knowing what you're doing intentionally that's where it's going to create a lot of problems that's where you see certain stylizations if they don't know anatomy you see wonky looking anime characters or if you see people trying to stylize a, a full composition or color piece you don't know what they're doing uh, in regards to the color they're just blindly making color choices so you gotta understand how light works to kind of really be able to exaggerate it uh, efficiently so yeah i feel that style is you know of your work and stuff it, it shouldn't be about uh, hiding your errors or your lack of skill in something obviously it can be used to an advantage but it can work a disadvantage if if used improperly I wouldn't say I would say don't d dwell on it give it a shot if people respond to it go with it if they don't then maybe go back and work on the fundamentals in a more realistic manner, right? Like uh, Steven Silver, right? Like he really, he I think he said in one of his art talk videos, you guys should check it out, he never really actually properly learned anatomy, right? He, he just draws in, in his characters. His characters in a way are, in a sense, the style is defined by some of those errors or some of those things that you ignore. And that's what makes it appealing in his case. And he said when he tried to learn anatomy, his, his character design started to suffer a little bit. They, things got a little bit more stiff and it lost a sense of that character. So I'd say just try multiple approaches, try different things and see if it works, see if people are receptive to it. And if not, you could switch gears. There's nothing wrong with either um, approach on that. So yeah, here into the background, I'm still managing a lot of uh, the brushwork. I'm, I'm cleaning things up. This is what it looks like probably maybe uh, four hours in, I want to say. I think the whole image all in all was almost like five, five and a half hours tops. It wasn't nothing I was going to dump a dozen hours into. So I'm just trying to make it look as nice as I can, as quickly as I can. It's not necessarily about speed. It's not like, oh, I can do this in X amount of time. It's suddenly I'm going to allot myself this much time. So I'm going to try to make it work within that time frame. Um, it's not a race. So. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying out a few of these different brushes. There's there's not much I, in regards to foliage brushes here. A lot of these are like a fairly generalized, uh, like it's it's kind of like a, a paint stroke type of brush. It, it I used it for a majority of the grass. It just puts a nice good firm line. Um, and then here, what I'm doing is I'm trying to balance out the separation of value and color between the foreground areas and the backgrounds. Right now in its current state, especially compared to the final, it's too blue for what I want. It's too dark, even though it, yeah, the, the game itself is very dark and moody. Uh, but I kind of pull back. Sometimes that's how I have to feel it out. I have to go too far in one direction before I'm going to realize or even you know acknowledge in this case, okay, this is not what I want to do. So I warm things back, you know, back up, you know, toward the end of the process here. And uh, as you can see here, I'm just dropping in a character. I'm going to try that out. I'm going to try Ellie out in this spot. So what I'm doing here is I set up this spot. There, this is literally staged to hold a subject here, as I said. So th sh this character is perfect for that. It's it's perfectly framed by the road, by the trees. Uh, and it's just a perfect place. So the character, if I put a nice highlight on that right side, it's going to work because I'm framing the character with, as you can see here, very simple brush strokes behind it, and they're cool in temperature. So it's dark and cool against what I'm going to do is a little bit lighter and warmer, at least on the highlight sides. I'm not uh, so concerned about whether the areas on the feet and things like that are really going to pop out. I just want to get the character to, uh, to kind of get seen in here. So I'm just figuring out the local color of the various parts of the character. Okay, the pants are this dark, they're this color, skin tones are like this, and of course the shirt will be a little bit lighter. And then from there, I can go in and add shapes of light onto these shapes of local color here. And that will help me define you know, whether or not um, that part of the picture is working. And Lyad asked, 
you know, I'd like to know more about making sharp edges or nice edges in general uh, and not making or painting blurry. And how long do you need to, um, it, okay, let's, well, let's address that part of the question first. The, the first part, right, edge control. The best way to do it is use hard edge brushes. Use the hard round, use triangle brushes, use square brushes. If you, if the brush itself has a hard edge, you'll make hard edge mark, uh, your marks that you make will be hard. Now, the case that this may not be uh, true in is if you have like the transfer or opacity settings enabled on your brush. So that means if you put a light amount of pressure it's going to come out as a light stroke or a soft stroke with a lot of transparency. And if you just build up a load of transparency brushes on top of each other or brush marks on top of each other, uh, you're going to start to get a little bit of a muddy edge if you're not aligning them if you're trying to make an edge. So I recommend use hard brushes and shut off the opacity or transfer settings as it's used as it's referred to in newer versions of Photoshop. You'll make much harder, much cleaner edges. The go-to method regardless of what brush you're using is use the selections, use the lasso tools, use the marquee tools. As you can see, like I'm adding the shadow right above the arms and in the, the main chest area there, I'm doing that within a selection. I'm always making a selection when I can to control the brushes, to really fine, to, uh, fine tune the mark making in that regard. Now, the other part that you'd asked about is how long do you, do you need, uh, should one be before applying to a studio? Um, I would say you gotta feel it out. You gotta know what the studio is looking for. You have to kinda know the level of art at that studio and what's expected there. Obviously, if you're looking at some kind of indie studios and, and things like that, the threshold might be a lot more flexible. You're gonna, you know, the lower point of entry, you can do a lot more drawing, a lot less uh, tighter, refined rendering, because they don't have the budget for that. A big studio like Naughty Dog is going to have the budget to hire teams of artists to do high-end production images. But if you're just starting out, if as long as your fundamentals are strong, there's plenty of studios out there looking for people that can just draw you know, really, really well and can articulate an idea. So I would say, depending on what type of jobs you're looking for, try to at least match some of that, that skill and, of course, that body of work, depending on uh, you know, where you want to look at, have it fit in with that environment, have it fit in with that studio. So like, I wouldn't really apply to Naughty Dog in its current in the current day in 2020 with a piece of art like this. I'd never even try. I wouldn't bother. This art is really good and it excels in some circles. It's great. You know, a little animation background is great for a little production painting, but for what they look for, for how they direct things, no, it doesn't fit at all. Um, so what's good in one circle may not be what another circle needs. And and don't weigh your art entirely based on, you know, one, one camp or the other. Uh, yeah, so now I'm bringing in a little bit more of this uh, cooler fill light, kind of dappling in. I'm trying to figure out how much I want to show of that. I do end up kind of losing a lot of it. I think it's just something that I do a little bit too much. And so I, it looks nice here, but through the revisions of the painting, um, I do lose that. It's something I may put in again, but it's not a deal breaker. I do want to fill out a little bit of the rest of the space, and I'm going with a primary color scheme in this scenario. So I'm going to add a blue car, I'm going to add a red car. I'm going to overlap them, and I'm going to stagnate them in a way around the image that it, it becomes a little bit more of a nice, peaceful spectacle. It's one of my favorite aspects of Last of Us, and I want to know what one of your favorites is in regards to the game. I just love walking around this post-apocalyptic post type of setting and, and kind of finding how it, you know it's treated the world and the environment that we left it. I think it's really fun, and it's always a cool theme. Um, but yeah, I'm just adding a little bit of car you know, over there, the doors all you know, just <laughs> falling off. I don't really have a reference for that, so I'm keeping it very simple. Uh, same with over here, just drawing a nice boxy kind of yellow shape and then I'll go in and add uh, the smaller pieces to it. And that's how I just draw or construct any of these scenes overall in general is I, I just figure out what is the kind of shape I need. I, I start to fill it in with the local color of that object, you know, that the object requires, right? Like in this case is yellow. And then I'll kind of start to find more about how I can turn that shape into form and how that color is going to affect that form. 
Uh, so it's, it's a very simple little system I employ, but it, it helps me, at least on a minimal sense, get through almost any object you know, that I need to draw. Sometimes it does help to have a specific type of reference based off the material or lighting condition, absolutely. I, I'm not saying don't get references, but I generally use the same little process to curate how I build uh, a lot of the uh, images that I do, at least currently. So a nice little bit of light over there kind of adds a nice little foreground background element. The, the trees I painted back there originally weren't lookers anyway, so I thought I'd just remove that. Um, and then just kind of balancing the last little bit of light kind of happening over here as I bring this, you know, to the final stages, which are just much more subtler tweaks and, and shifts of things. But the core of the composition is now here. It's fun to see, of course, where we came from. Hey guys, thank you for watching the video. So who else out there is playing The Last of Us 2 this week? I know it's a pretty divisive game. I'm enjoying it. I definitely have my my qualms with it. It's far from perfect, but I do like it and I'd recommend it. How are you enjoying it so far and uh, how do you like this format of the video? I'd like to thank everybody that participated, of course, once more. And of course, take care and stay safe. I also want to give out a shout out to my patron, uh, Christina Vidal. Uh, she's a, a talented young artist based out of Hamburg and she's working at her concept and illustration. She has some nice uh, drawing skills, she's really pulling things together, and yeah, just nice, vibrant uh, work. Definitely give her uh, a check out over there on Instagram, at Instagram forward slash ChrisGVArt. Thank you for your support, everybody. If you're a student and need help with your fundamentals, with your painting, with your color, with your composition, with your design, check out that, that Patreon. I'm, I'm providing a lot of resources for a very affordable price. Also as a bonus, the patrons get access to a version of this video that's over twice the length, the actual PSD, and I will break down more specific techniques and procedures to getting something like this done.